downtown Portland at Tom McCall Waterfront Park, enjoying a beautiful day by the river. Some Oregon State history for you. What is different about Oregon State's flag than any other state flag in the Union? Well, for the answer, we turn to the keeper of the flag, Kate Brown, who's Oregon's Secretary of State. What does keeper of the flag actually mean? Well, um, a couple of things. I make sure there's a seal on the state flag, mm -hmm. and I make sure that seal does not end up in inappropriate places, like on people's underwear. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I also hand out the flag um, when we have specific ceremonies. I got a call from a legislator a couple weeks ago who wanted to give it to a young man who'd raised a lot of money for uh, Iraqi war veterans. And so I made sure that that young man got a flag okay. from well, the state of what Oregon. Of flag. What is different about our flag? Both sides has two different sides. Beaver on the back, Oregon State Seal on the front. And, that, and we're the only one in the nation. That's correct. All but right. most people don't know that one. <laughs> you know what I want to talk about? I want to talk about the, the high voter turnout that we got in November of 08. Boy, the top 10 in the country. What do you attribute that to? Well, we vote in Oregon by mail. Mm -hmm. uh, Oregon voters like it. It's simple, it's accessible, and it's secure. And it makes for better turnout. And regularly, Oregon is one of the top uh, states in the nation for voter turnout, um, and I think that's a very good thing. Now, you said secure. Uh, many would argue that it's susceptible to fraud. I is it? We find that vote by mail is very secure, and that's because every ballot that goes through your elections office, the signature is checked against the signature on file. So when you register to vote, you signed a registration card, and every signature is checked. If it doesn't match, you get a phone call to find out why the signature doesn't match the one that's on the ID card. So it's very secure. And frankly, if there was any fraud committed, we go after you and we prosecute. Hmm. Okay, see, you're tough. I would not, uh... <laughs> in fact, you were the first female Senate Majority Leader. How has your past political career helped you in your role as Secretary of State? Well, I think there's a couple of things. Um, when I became the caucus leader in Oregon, um, I came from the east side of Portland. That was my house district. And when I moved to the Senate and became the caucus leader, I gave had a sense that um, I was leader of all of Oregon and that I needed to represent all of Oregon. When the Democrats got to the majority, uh, they elected me to be their first uh, woman to ever serve as majority leader. And it was that perspective of making sure that all of Oregon was included in policy decisions that I think has been very valuable in my role as Secretary of State. These are tough economic times. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about the budget, about what's going on in Salem to try to uh, allay people's fears that, that things are just going to get worse. Well, I will tell you, I oversee the uh, business registry uh, where folks that are starting new businesses in Oregon, they register it at our corporation division. Um, we have a very great system. It's a one-stop shopping, and it makes it really easy to start a new business and create jobs in Oregon. The numbers of folks that we are seeing creating, starting new businesses in Oregon is way up, and that's a good sign. Now, Oregon leads the nation in citizen initiative, correct? But the initiatives are down. What, what do you think the reason for that is? Well, I think there's a couple reasons for that. First of all, um, the economy, it's definitely tough times, and so there's not a lot of resources out there for the campaigns for initiatives. Secondly, we've worked really hard to crack down on fraud and abuse in the signature gathering process mm -hmm. in Oregon's initiative process. I think that's a good thing. Oregonians can feel more confident that their initiatives get on the ballot through legal and legitimate means. And then finally, um, voters have rejected quite a number mm -hmm. of uh, initiatives in the last several years. I think only uh, three out of the last 18 in the last several years. So um, we're seeing, I think, to some extent, voter fatigue around the initiative process. So those are some of the reasons why fewer initiatives on the ballot in the fall. We are still in the process of verifying signatures I don't know how many will actually be on the ballot in November, roughly in the neighborhood of 7 to 10. All right. We appreciate your time and your insight. And Kate Brown, thank you very much for joining us on Comcast Newsmakers. Make it a great day, everyone.